Hello everyone. I just wanted to make a video today about some things that have been on my mind and explain to you a few things. So it is September already and September is Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. So I need you to pay attention to how your body is feeling because this stupid disease whispers and I need you to be aware of some of the top symptoms which are bowel changes, fatigue, bloating, and heartburn. Advocate for yourself. If you feel like something is off or something is wrong, go to your doctor and ask them for a blood test and for an ultrasound. Okay. That said, a little about my history. I, in the 80s, was a young mother with, um, let's just say, a less than idyllic marriage. And I knew I had to do something. And my calling had always been to be something that would help others. So nursing is what I was led to. Um, I got my degree and I started work at a doctor's office, a, a, I don't know, conglomerate maybe is what you want to call it. And we were all um, working towards the same end, which was making people feel better, cures if they were available, and, you know, helping people through more serious illness and hand-holding and, um, you know, just connecting with another human being. And that's what I loved. I loved my job in the beginning. As the years went on, I progressed into different areas with the same company, but they they promised me that it was um, a step up, a step up here, a step up there. Looking back, I should have never stepped up because once I was out of the patient care area of things, I was... Um, not as happy. In fact, I was miserable with a capital M. The company that I worked for had changed hands and new authorities had taken over. There were new rules, which that's fine. You know, you, you go along and you try to adapt. Um, but this company that I worked for they watched everything. We couldn't clock in a minute too soon or we got in trouble. If we clocked in a minute too late, we got docked. Uh, they listened to every conversation we had with our patients, take them in or out of context because every time you interact with another human being, it's different. I'm sure you all realize that. The company I worked for did not realize that. It was ABC123, you do it this way, or you know, you're know you gonna get called into the supervisor's office. Um, they watched what outfits we wore to work. We weren't allowed to wear open-toed shoes. It was Nazi Germany. It was not your normal work stress at that point. Um, so I started at age 54, 55, applying for other positions within the same company, but I thought it would be A, closer to home, um, B, more one-on-one -on -one with my patients, like what I loved originally. 
And for some reason, and they say that there's not supposed to be age discrimination, but they ask for your date of birth on every application. The young people seem to get the positions that I was interviewing for every time. There were so many evenings I would get home from work. My husband worked nights till like 11 o'clock at this point. Um, we were, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. We were in a lot of debt and I couldn't just quit. And there were nights when I would come home from work and just melt into the bed with my dog and cry and cry and cry. The stress level that I was under in that moment was more than I have ever, and I will say ever, experienced in my life. And I have been through divorce. I have been through stalking. I have been through cancer. I have been through it. But that time in my life took the cake. So I started to ask God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, please do something. Do something to help me. Please do something to help me. There's no way I can do this for another 20 years or whatever it was. Um, please intervene somehow, please. Well, fast forward and I was diagnosed with cancer. Not what I, you know, really was asking, but what was given. So... At that point in time, I was 56 years old when I was diagnosed. And circumstances and stage and, you know, where I was in the disease was, was almost stage four. Um, one thing led to another and I was not going to be able to work anymore. So I was able to quit work, which was my dream. <laughs> um, at least get out of that area. Um, so, you know, I was free of that, of that stress. And I could just concentrate on my health and getting better and doing chemo and going through it and not having to worry about, you know, bringing in the paycheck and doing, you know, all the things that is expected of you. So that was 11, 12 years ago. Um, I was 65 two years ago. So I, you know, basically when I was able to go out on retirement disability, I was able to do that for 11 years and not have to work and not have to worry and not be, you know, stressed out that I wasn't contributing toward our, um, you know, our income and what was going on. So... I just want to say at the end of this that if you are going to be or have been diagnosed with cancer, any kind of cancer, and you have to do all the things and they sweep you up into the the chemo and the scans and the, you know, yada, yada. If it's within your heart and soul that that's what you need to do to try to live and continue with your life, do it because you never know what's at the end of that tunnel 
And even though sometimes I felt like I was going to die doing the chemo, I didn't. And here we are 11 years later. And I have got to see my family grow and participate in so many things that if I had given up, I wouldn't have. I will say that it's everyone's personal soul searching journey, whether or not to do treatment. For me, I chose to do it. And I went into it with the thought that if it works, it works. And if it does not, it does not. And I'm not doing it again. That's me. That may not be you. Please don't take that as, you know, gospel or what you need to do or how you need to think. That's just me. You know, you have to consider your age, your overall health, all that. But I did it. And do I worry about it still coming back? I do. And oddly enough, it's September and my oncologist is going to do a routine scan on me um, the 5th. And just like all the other scans that I've had in the last 11 years, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Even though my blood test has been elevated for three years nothing has shown up. So who knows what that's about. Um, you know, I there's no judgment here from me to give anyone like a piece of my mind. Some people think, oh, I, I'm diagnosed with cancer. The oncologist says, but you need to do ABC. You don't need to do that. Stop, just stop, just put the brakes on. And I know that they just sweep you through everything and all of a sudden you are in the chair with chemo hooked up to you and you're like, wait, wait. You can wait a week, a two, three, a month and make decisions that are right for you and your family. Basically, make decisions that are right for you and no one else. That's the most important thing because in the end, it's only about you and God. So, I just wanted to um, do this video and let you know how it's feeling today. And, you know, chemo is not a surefire, surefire thing. And sometimes it is. In my case, it has been for many years. And it's up to you to decide. But basically, stress gets you nowhere. And if you do think, if you've got that feeling inside, please, please advocate for yourself with your family practice, your, your primary care, whatever they call it today, your gynecologist, whoever you can connect to, sit down with them, have a hand-holding session and say, hey, Look, you know, if you have to say, look, I looked it up on Google and I've got four out of the 10 symptoms. Let's, let's pursue this. It's your right. Don't let anybody ever tell you that it is not your right to pursue your health issues just because it's what they were taught in med school. It's your life and you get to make the decisions. 
So if you have any questions, please leave them below and I will try to answer all of them. If YouTube puts them all up, uh, sometimes they don't, but when they do, I try to answer them all. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And I will see you in the next one.